Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the fair use, fair dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. Happy uh, Monday morning. I know it's Labor Day. I wasn't going to put out a video, but then I decided I would. So um, I hope everybody is having a fabulous Labor Day. We have a lot to cover in this video, you guys, a lot. So let's just jump in and get there, shall we? Let's go. We're starting off this morning. Um, Diana's brother, Charles Spencer, on the 26th anniversary of her demise, put up a photo from when they were small children. No caption on it, but a very sweet photo nonetheless. And um, yeah, he said, you know, Diana and I had two older sisters who were away at school, so she and I were very close, which I believe very nice. All right, let's move on. And King Charles was wearing a new tartan based um, by the Scottish Tartan Authority. And it was dates or it dates back to 1850. And I showed you these pictures earlier in the year when the king and queen popped in to see this stuff being made. And um, they looked at the Scottish wool and the technology that allows de details that are very historic to be recreated. And one of the reasons we're looking at all this is because King Charles over the summer uh, went to one of his favorite things, which is the Royal Highland Gathering in Scotland. This is also a, uh, a, the article says, and I agree that it's a display of Scottish heritage, and it's a very short drive from the castle where Charles uh, is there for the summer break. Well, here's the interesting part. King Charles was wearing the new created King Charles III tartan. That's right, he was wearing his very own tartan that was created just for him. So like I just told you guys, the, the design that was presented to King Charles is based on the Balmoral set, which dates back from 1850. But the new tartan has been officially registered with the Scottish Registrar of the tartans. And you should know that the cloth is woven in 100% Scottish wool. Now, I've never really paid that much attention to the design on the kilts. I thought they all looked the same, but actually there's a central stripe, one broad and two narrow, and that is a feature of the tartans that are royal. I did not know that. All right. Now, as you can clearly see from the pictures, Anne was there with her husband, Sir Tim Lawrence. The king was there with Queen Camilla, and uh, they got she got the obligatory flowers, and then they sat down to watch the games. It's pretty obvious that they were enjoying themselves. They were laughing and giggling uh, throughout the entire thing. By the way, if you look in the back there, that's Johnny in a suit sitting back against the wall. Hi, Johnny. This was one of the Queen's most favorite things to do, and I'm glad that the King is continuing on with the tradition. Yep. All right, let's move on. Now, of course, the next day, the royal family got together for a church in Scotland, and we see Princess Anne and her fabulous husband. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak then arrived for the Sunday morning service. And then, of course, Queen Camilla and King Charles were seen going to church, which just brings up a, 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 an observation that I have. Harry and Meghan, I don't believe, go to church. They've never been papped once in all these years going to church because I don't believe they go. Next up, this is just a quick update. We know that the Heritage Foundation went ahead and filed in court to get uh, Harry's visa immigration. Well, DHS has now filed back saying that they don't think that it should be released, saying that even though uh, he has released other information, this should still remain private. We'll see what happens. Moving on. Next up, just in case you hadn't heard it, I'm sure you all have, but my Mohammed Al-Fayed, he is the Egyptian tycoon, the father of Dodi, who was uh, killed in the accident with Princess Diana, has finally passed away. He was 94 years old. Now, for those of you who are unaware, he forced his way into high London society by purchasing lavish establishments. He owned the Ritz Hotel in Paris for four decades. 
Um, he had royal warrants. He had you know all kinds of stuff going on. In 2021, he was worth, they said, about $1.8 billion. He had his own shipping company. He, he was just, you know, a big businessman. He did well. The problem is uh, he always wanted British citizenship, but it never happened, okay? So in 1997, we know about the accident. We know what happened to Diana and Jody. But the problem was he could not accept, he's, he's like Harry, he couldn't accept the reality of what happened, he sponsored the Queen's Royal Windsor Horse Show from 1984 to 1997. Prince Philip withdrew his warrant in 2000. By 2001, Elizabeth or Queen Elizabeth and Prince Charles's warrants expired and they were not renewed. You know, he accused the royal family of having something to do with her death. He also accused, in case you didn't know, Prime Minister Tony Blair, uh, Princess Diana's sister, Sarah, and uh, her late husband, Robert Fellows, French toxicologists, the French ambulance drivers, the car driver, London police chiefs, bodyguards, some of her closest friends. She, he made all kinds of wild accusations. He claimed she was pregnant when she died. The postmortem clearly showed that wasn't true. I mean, the guy just like lost it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm sure he's reunited with his son now. And I'm, you know, I, my condolences to the family. Next up, I'm just going to touch on this again because I told you guys about this and people, I guess they didn't understand what I was going for. There was a radio host who was homeless for nine months as a teenager and now he's very successful and he basically came out and said, I'm sick of listening to Harry Wine about the, you know, the death of his mother. A lot of people have lost parents and they don't have the means to try to get help. They can't afford it or they end up on the street like he did and, you know, stop whining and get over it. That's what it was about. Moving on. Okay, this popped up on Twitter from Lady C. She said that Better Up is not renewing his contract when it runs out uh, and that somehow this has implications for his visa and immigration status. And they're moving from California to Texas. Yeah, we'll see. Moving on. All right, I just had to touch on this article because it says that Harry's heart of Invictus is going to strengthen his position because and the reason I'm touching on it is because it's, it says Harry appears to have moved on from his family drama and he focuses on the causes that are held close to his heart. I'm sorry. Did the person who wrote this article watch The Heart of Invictus? He says he's doing this humbly. He's a helper and a supporter. Yeah, no, he took swipes at his family. He's none of the above. All right, next up. Do you guys remember I showed you this tweet where it said that the IMDB is deleted reviews that are less than 10 out of 10 because they want, um, you know, they want a good ratings. Okay, that's what they want. Anyway, apparently this is now confirmed. It's clearly showing that, um, yeah, they are altering the reviews and um, I think it's horrible. I mean, that just goes to show you, you can't believe things that you that you see online. All right, moving on. Next up, Jill Biden, who has been at the Invictus Games previously, is not going this year. Instead, she is going to attend a going away dinner for the U.S. athletes uh, next week. She is not going to go to Germany. She's going to speak to the American you know, people instead, she now she's always been an advocate for, for veterans and she's still going to address the games, but she's not going. And people are wondering why she's gone before. Could it be that maybe she's afraid of the backlash because this, you know, we're coming up on election year and um, there's this whole thing going on with Harry and his immigration status. Or could it be that they're concerned that he might ask for another ride on Air Force One? Let's see. All right, moving on. I think one of the biggest problems Harry has, I agree with this Twitter user, is that Harry ignores the stuff his family has done for him. For instance, we know that William donated all of his winnings to the Invictus Games, well, millions of dollars, a lot of money, or thousands of dollars. I think it was like half a million. Hmm. 
then Harry couldn't give an interview in 2017 and it would have been to help raise money. So Charles stepped in and did the interview for him. You know what I mean? It's just like Harry wants to act like his family had nothing to do with Invictus and that's not true. Then the Invictus Games itself posted on Twitter about something that happened in 2018 with an injured soldier. Charles stepped in, actually bought a, um, a prosthetic leg, I believe it was, for one of these people. I mean, it's true. The royal family has always supported Invictus until Harry wanted to grab it for himself. Now, with that, I have to say Harry's main problem, I agree with this Twitter user, his main problem is that his feelings he thinks are more important than anybody else's, and he expects everybody to care about him and his feelings and his thoughts, but he doesn't care about, you know, the feelings of his dad or his brother or his stepmom or anybody else. All right, moving on, you guys should know that Netflix has not, the, the show has not moved up to go into the Daily 10 on the streaming charts in the United States or Britain. It is not doing well. It has flopped, and I'm, it flopped because of Harry, like seriously. All right, let's move on now. Here we go, you guys. Oh, my. Oh, my. So Harry and Meghan went to Beyonce's Renaissance World Tour the first night in California. Now, Beyonce asked everybody, not just Harry and Meghan, everybody to wear silver. So everybody out in the audience, you can see, was wearing some sort of silver outfit. Now, we know that the idea behind them appearing on camera was to undo some of the damage done when she claimed she was at Taylor Swift, but she wasn't. She wants her name put into her mouth along with Beyonce's, you know, along with Taylor Swift. She's looking for that clout. Unfortunately, things didn't go so well. This was also supposed to put to bed the rumors that there's something wrong in their marriage. This was a massive backfire, okay? So, first of all, uh, let me just say Beyonce looks fabulous. She always looks fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> just she's gorgeous she's talented and she has worked hard to get to where she is she didn't rely on anybody else that's one of the things about her that I like now we know we all know that Harry and Meghan met Beyonce and Jay-Z when they blew off the Royal Marines Memorial to go tout for Disney I showed you guys that video just the other day. And then supposedly Beyonce sent a private text to Megan, which she read out. And you have not heard a word. So, I mean, listen, Megan's birthday came and went. Nothing from these two. Nothing from uh, Tyler Perry. So this was a total setup. Let me tell you how I think the night went. First of all, this sugar suddenly put up a tweet. I was just given free tickets to Beyonce. Wow. Yeah, right by the area where it costs like $70,000. Isn't that interesting? So then they were papped walking in. They're holding hands, looking so happy. And then, of course, they were papped before the concert started. And they're, they're taking selfies. They're talking to somebody. They're sending text messages. Oh, don't they look lovely? Okay, then the next thing you know, they're papped hugging and kissing. And this is the beginning of the night. Look how happy we are, everybody. This is why they were in this section, okay? But then the night disintegrated. <laughs> As the night went on, it became painfully clear that things took a turn for, for the worst after these videos. You can see that's Abigail Spencer, Genevieve, one of them, it's her husband also was with them. And Harry looks most unhappy. Obviously, between the first videos that were taken of them when they first arrived and they were all happy and were out here for Doria's birthday, something happened. Because Harry looks so miserable and unhappy. He's not talking to anybody. There's no more clawing between him and Megan. They're not holding hands. She's not hugging on him and kissing him and they're, they're not loved up anymore. Obviously, something has gone wrong. I think that it's true when they spend any amount of time in each other's presence, I think they don't get along. I think they can put on a show for the cameras for maybe five whole minutes and then it just goes to crap. That's my honest, honest opinion. So this person who got the ticket said, I took a bunch of pictures and not in one is he enjoying themselves. As you can see here, he's on his phone. He's not even paying attention to the concert that's going on. He's more interested in what's going on on social media 
than, than what's going on right in front of him. I mean, it's it's almost ridiculous. Now, Megan is like, oh, look at me. I'm the Duchess. Look at me. I've got, you know, the best of everything. But something weird is going on here, you guys. That's, I mean, look at Harry's face during all of this. Really, something has happened, and he is very unhappy. It's pretty obvious. Do we know the difference between the fake Harry and the really happy Harry? Yes, we do. This is the happy Harry when he's out with Nacho. He was out Father's Day, when he's out playing polo, when they were in Singapore. We know what the really happy Harry looks like. And what we saw at that concert? Uh-uh. And we know what Harry looks like happy. We also know what Harry looks like when he's with Megan. I believe that they set this thing up to have the videos released to show everybody how happy they were. But before those videos could be released, other concert goers took pictures of them being really miserable and those were released. And so now they're quickly releasing the videos of them dancing together to try to show everybody how really happy they were. But some other pictures came out, which made me go, huh? To start with, do you see this big guy um, in the blue on the right? And this was during July 4th, there he is again. Is that him in the box? That's one of their husbands. There he is on the left. That's somebody's husband. So I completely agree with this Twitter user. If a picture of William and Catherine acting like that was released, the squad would be saying they're miserable together. Absolutely. Instead, you guys, the squad is basically saying, as you can see, that um, Harry's there to protect them. That's his job. He understands his job. He's not there to have fun. He's there to protect them. <laughs> oh, God. Now, really quickly, for those of you who may not have noticed, you see Harry's jacket. The buttons are on the left. That's because he's wearing Megan's jacket. The silk-covered buttons, that is a female coat. I guess he didn't have anything to wear. Hmm. Now, interestingly enough, while this is going on, down on the floor, right in front of the stage, you had Kris Jenner, JC. They're all down there hanging out, doing the electric slide, Tyler Perry. No Harry and Megan. To get down on that floor, you have to be invited. Mm-hmm. I thought the Kardashians were their new BFFs. I thought that uh, Tyler Perry's Lily's godfather, although he didn't even bother to wish Megan a happy birthday after it came out, Megan was the one that tipped off the press as to where they were staying. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to point out that according to Neil Sean, and I'm taking this one with a big grain of salt, <clears throat> according to Neil Sean, Ticket sales for Beyonce's concert is not going well. And up to three days ago, Harry and Meghan weren't on the list for any tickets. But that they showed up at this concert to bring attention to Beyonce's concert so that it's free publicity for them, free publicity for Beyonce. And Beyonce now is going to, um, you know, re return the favor in kind by boosting Invictus. And Neil Sean says, I told you this was going to happen. Dory is the new ace in the hole. Dory is going to be out there all the time. Personally, I don't think Beyonce needs Megan for publicity. So as the night progressed, Harry, in the end, literally disappeared. He was nowhere to be found. Now look here in the very beginning of this video, and you see him sitting there next to Megan with his phone. He stands up. The video pans over, pans back. Whoop! Harry is gone. Megan is just out there enjoying herself. There is no Harry. He has disappeared. Again, this was a PR stunt to try to show them as happily married. Big fat fail, let me tell you. You know, I wonder, people, in all seriousness, I wonder if she didn't say, come on, Harry, we need to go out together. There'll be other friends there. Let's see if we can enjoy a nice night out together. And then he realized he got played. That would explain the face. Now, I have to tell you, let's not forget that the death of Diana is a trigger for Harry. And Dodie Fayed died, who was with his mother, Diana, when she died. That should be a trigger for him as well. Maybe it's just me. He doesn't look triggered to me. Sorry. I think Harry is only triggered when Harry wants to be triggered. You guys know what I'm saying. 
All right, you guys. Ooh, I can't wait to see the comments on this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell. Don't forget to check it if you've already hit that button. Go into the description box. Find the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, my physical address. If you have donated through the coffee fund or through my thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.